I had a lot of these people who were not necessarily like people that a lot of folks would say, I'm not going to listen to him. I would listen or won't listen. You know, you take a piece from here, take a piece from there. And then once you start to apply it in your decision, then that helps you like you look back and say, I'm glad I did. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. No, that's definitely that's wisdom right there, man. Um, so you so you you end up going to Florida State. Um, what was your experience like when you got there, like getting on campus, being, getting on the football team and, you know, going to your freshman first, year? First of all, they did not like me when I first got there. Who? I don't think nobody did. I showed up, they like, oh, this dude, five, five, nine, 140 pounds. Mm. He's supposed to be the t top corner in the country coming right. out. I, I was first team USA Today coming out of high school. I was the number one or two corner in the country coming out, but they ain't like me. We recruited all these other guys who were six one, you know. They but they looked at me like ah, nah. Same, yeah. And then I had I my shoulder was messed up coming into college. I had to have shoulder surgery my first year. I already knew I had to. I knew it was red shirt because I had to get shoulder surgery. My my shoulder was hurt coming out of high school, so. Man, they ain't give me no love, bro. Yeah, they like you. I, you hurt, and you and you five nine one forty. Like come it on, was bro. bad. It was yeah. bad. So I was just like, of course, you call him back. My my one of my best friends. He went to Georgia Tech. Um, my other buddy, he ended up going to South Carolina. We on the same high school team. Mm -hmm. Them boys playing their freshman year. He the punt return at Georgia Tech. He playing with his slot receiver. I gotta be, I gotta get like, yo. I'm like, hey, so the boy's calling me like, he calling me from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm going out in the air, they showing me love. Like, I need this, bro. I said, bro, I said, it's a struggle. I'm trying to just make it to class all the time. <laughs> I gotta get this shoulder surgery, so yeah. I gotta go to rehab. Yeah. I can't lift weights, I can't do nothing. The yeah. coach is looking at me like, why I recruit you? When I first got there, they told me it was gonna give me number four. They gave me number 29. <laughs> gave number four. This is the craziest thing, bro. They gave number four to another freshman who played receiver from California, Kenny O'Neill. And they told me they was gonna give me number four. Oh yeah, they baited you. They oh, baited they got you. me. So I was like, oh, hey, baby. hell no. Yeah. But I had already been through that in 10th grade. You know what I was about to say? I was about to really say, bro, I'm really seeing some repeated patterns. Bro. It's the same like, thing. Bro. Everything prepared you to get what happened at Florida State, bro. Like it's the same exact thing. You know, the coach is not liking you. Nah, I ain't gonna say like they, like, they like me, but I wasn't I wasn't ready to play. Right. Even in high school. Like, so so that's crazy. So like you uh you get healthy, you know, your shoulder. I get that. I get I, so I have shoulder surgery. I come back in the spring. Come back in the spring. And, bro, they got me last on the depth chart. I'm talking about dead last. And then, then when the school, when the fall start, when the new recruits come in, bro, they had me behind some of the, the freshmen that we recruited. Mm. So I'm like, what we're trying. The heck? So I'm taking it very personal, but this is the most laser focus I've been. Mm -hmm. Now, at corner, Antonio Cromartie was a starting corner, and I think the other one was. I'm not sure. Maybe Gerard Ross. He was older guy. His senior. Mm -hmm. So, and then we had just the year before that we had Brian McFadden and Leroy Smith. They both went to, went to the NFL. And I had some guys. So we had some really good players. Yeah. So, and then we had all these high recruit guys who were coming in. Mm -hmm. So, which I was one of them dudes too. Yeah. So basically, we get there in the spring, and it's like we battling it out. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what. I find I didn't know what to do, but I knew how to play man. Flip the switch. Flip the switch. So, so all I was thinking about one on ones. I'm a guard. Chris Davis, CC Davis. I'm guarding Crafazo Thorpe. All these guys with draft picks. I'm gonna guard them one on ones. Okay. I'm going against the best guy. I don't even want to go against the guys I came in with. I want to go against the starters. I want to go against Cody Fag. These dudes who are getting drafted, who, yeah. who are about to go to the next level. Yeah. And I want to show them that. I can play. Yeah. So of course, I don't know if guys were scared or not scared, but hell, I'm finna get up here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go one time, two times, three times. I'm gonna keep going. Right. So, still fall comes. Now I'm probably like third string. No, summertime hits. I'm sorry, summertime hits. 
Antonio Camardi tears his ACL in the summer. Mm. Summer workouts. We are doing one-on-ones. We had a camp, bro. Some high school kids came from, from high school. You know, the high school kids come up talking trash to the college kids. Yeah, so Crow is like, man, I'm finna go show this high school kid what's what. Mm-hmm. Dude run a deep ball, Crow tears ACL. Like doing workouts. Not even now, Crow team. projected. Crow is going to be, he first team, preseason USA, all, all American. He probably going to be top corner, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. One of the top corners in college football. This, he, he never started at Florida State. He started one game in college. So he didn't start before that. People don't know that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> People don't know that. No, yes. So he tore his ACL. So now it's like, oh, we're looking for somebody to replace Crow. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be the starter? It's up. It's up. <laughs> Here we go. It's up. my opportunity. I'm a red shirt freshman. Yeah. So, we, of course, we battling. We got everybody battling. And then I remember, so we played Miami the first game. We ranked number two. They ranked number three. Mm-hmm. So, it's like Miami, Florida State. We played on Monday night, first Monday night game in football. Yeah. So, it's going to end in, in Dope Campbell. So, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's going to be the game. The game, yeah. Right? So, um, Coach Bowden ain't never called me. Mm. I got Coach Bowden called me. Called me to his office. I'm like, oh, shoot. What yeah, I what's do? going on? I'm like, what did I do? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah. So Coach Bowden called me to his office, and I've probably been in Coach Bowden's office three times the whole time I've been there. That was the first time I've been in there, mm-hmm. besides getting recruited. He called me to his office. He's like, um, he's like, Tony, he's like, I want to talk to you. Um, he's like, you're doing a heck of a job for us. He's like, you're going you're gonna to start against, you're going to be a starter. You start in that corner. We're going to announce it to the media. Yeah. He's like, you're going to be the you're going to be the only freshman on defense to play. Yeah. To start. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, yeah. I can wait to get out of there. I'm calling my brother. The first yeah. time I called my brother. Yeah. And I was like, and so I called him. And I'm, I, usually when I call him, I'm complaining. Mm-hmm. Man, you know, blah, blah. So I called him. I said, bro, you won't believe this. I said, man, he like, what you do? I said, bro, I'm starting against Miami. Freshman. What? He was like, what? Yeah. He couldn't believe it. Yeah. So I'm like, y'all got to come to the game. I'm like, I'm starting. The game is next week. Yeah. So he was like, I said, I told you I've been balling in practice. Yeah. He didn't really believe They believed me, but they didn't he believe it. Yeah. And especially how I, I just came off of surgery, like all these things. So they didn't really know. Mm-hmm. So fast forward, bro. We played Miami the first game. First game we go out there. I remember like it was yesterday. I'm on the bus. I'm sitting the first seat on the bus. Mm-hmm. We coming from the hotel in Thomasville, Leon Washington, one of my boys, close friend of mine. Not Leon, yeah. So Leon is star running back. He two years above me. Like he been playing in Miami for us. They game for two years. So okay. he a junior. I'm a freshman. Mm-hmm. And so we listen to Jeezy on the bus. Yeah, yeah. I will never forget <laughs> this. Put on for the got tears in it. <laughs> I said, Oh, this that is boy, real. That boy ran. I'm so nervous, and I'm like. I mean, this, I thought motivation won't work. The whole ride down, yeah. the whole bus rocking. Yeah. I'm like, this is Miami, Florida. This is what I grew up uh-huh. wanting to do. Yeah. And I'm out here about to play and yeah. start and play the whole game. Okay. And they said, we ain't rotate. Mm-mm. Coach Andrews told me, we not rotate. You playing the whole game. You out there. We, until you can't handle it. I yeah. said, okay, no problem. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. We get there, bro. I'm pulling in the stadium, and that thing is rocking. Oh, yeah. Game day there, everybody. Crazy. And all I was thinking about was, bro, this is what I was thinking about when I was a little kid my whole life. Like, this is all I wanted to do. Wow. I wasn't thinking about pro football. Yeah. I was thinking about doing this. Yeah. I'm like, I finally get to do it. Changed my number. I was number 15 that year. Still ain't give me number four. I went to 15. I was cool with that. So I go down there. I'm like, coach. So I ask, I'm like, coach, I need to be on the kickoff team. Because this is going to be our first. Oh, I'm trying to get them. Get them. Trying to bust somebody. I'm like, I need to be on the kickoff team. Put me as the as 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 uh, as the the full guy or whatever. As a crash dummy. Put me. I get out there. I'm dog, I remember my, my dog on legs was shaking, bro. They were shaking. Now, my jump still 5'9". 153 pounds, maybe. Mm-hmm. I ain't gained but 10 pounds. I went to college. Yeah. On the side of the ball, bro, they got Moss over there. Mm-hmm. They got Frank Gore running back. 
They got some boys. They got some boys. Now, they got some boys. now I don't know. I know who they are, but they ain't. They not the Frank Gore and them guys that you know to this day. Right. They they younger than college too. Damon Hessler over there. They got they got some dudes. I'm gonna play against these guys. Yeah. Now I don't. I know who they are, but I'm I'm me. Yeah. Right. So I'm thinking the same thing. Mm-hmm. So we go out there first play kickoff, bro. I swear I got a little pee dripping down my ear. <laughs> I don't know if it really was. But bro, let me but tell it's you. The nerd, it's the I, I, said, I was like so re- I was just so ready. <laughs> Pre-game warmer, bro, I probably dropped every ball they threw. <laughs> so nervous. And you know how uh, at Florida State they got the Garner and Gold <laughs> girls over there. Yeah, they like, uh, they look like, 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 like So so of course, and then my boys, so like this is how I go. Everybody in your class, they happy for you. Yeah. They like, boy, you star. And like my, my J.R. Bryant, he was one of my boys in school. Um, uh, who was Darius McClure was my roommate. You know, all of us was DBs. So they knew I was playing. So them boys like, come on, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So man, we got that first play, bro. They ran like a lead to Frank Gore. Mm-hmm. The the receiver uh crack crack block. They ain't blocked the corner. Came up, made it tackle. Yeah. Boy, you thought I won a Super Bowl or something. Yeah, I got him from the corner. I got him from the corner. And they're like, oh, it's a good play. He probably gained like two yards or something. But I'm like, oh. After that, it was regular Settle football. down. Settle down. I didn't know what nobody else was doing on the field. Mm. I just knew what my job was, and I knew to talk to the safety right here. Yeah. So it was like, oh, we playing cover three. I'm like, oh, are you down or you back? Right. Oh, he down. Okay. My safety coming from over there. Play outside leverage. So I played just... The whole the whole freshman year, I just thought about what leverage my job playing technique. So I ended up playing good. I made I was freshman All American. Yeah, and I had to have surgery again. Oh my man, on oh, what? My other shoulder. Man, <laughs> but, other shoulder. Damn, man, it's so much. To, it's really so much to like <laughs> unpack right there, bro. Because honestly, man, like you coming in and making a statement, like. What a lot of young players like, because I get asked a lot, man. What? How can I stand out? Like, blah blah blah. Like, like you really hit it on the head when you saying like, "Bro, I'm finna, I'm last on the depth chart. Don't nobody believe in me. I'm finna go line up against the best receiver." That's it. Come on, man. Show that you want to compete, bro. Like, don't let, don't let the depth chart or whatever it is early. Like, you can't let that get in your head, bro. Because then you're gonna be psyching yourself out, thinking you ain't. Like, nah, it's like, at the end of the day, bro, you at one of the best schools out yeah, there, bro. Yeah. Like, you got to, yes. you, you know what I'm saying? You can't take everything in person. They done gave somebody else your number, number four. Like, you you know what I'm saying? Like, the crazy part about it is that those things are probably the best things that could have happened to me. Exactly. Because it created, I, okay, I got something to prove. I got more to work for. You know, it's not just given, which nobody has it given. I don't care what nobody says. Mm-hmm. Everybody got to work. Yeah. But when people count you out or when you think they look at you a certain way, you know, like, you know how they feel about you. When I walk by the hallways my freshman year, them coaches ain't come talk to me. Walking straight by They you. walk straight by me. So I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. He don't like me like that. Yeah. I, now, I remember, and I won't say their names, my, after that first game, we played against Miami. They want to shake your hand. All of them. High five. Uh-huh. This, that. Yeah. And I'm like... It's the same dude that didn't speak to me all last year, but I didn't take it personal. It was more so yeah. like, you got to earn it. Yeah. You got to earn it. Earn so it. I was under the impression that, or I knew, not under the impression, but I knew that that's the same thing I went through in 10th grade. Same thing I went through, you know, transferring schools or whatever. And I had insecurities as well. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit up there and act like I was all confident. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, man, do I belong here? Yeah. I walk in the locker room, I see all these big old dudes in here. Yeah. You know, these dudes about to get drafted. Mm-hmm. But one thing I would say is, man, the older guys, you, when you earn the respect of your teammates, bro, that instills a confidence in you. It do. So the older guys who were, you know, seniors when I was a true freshman, when they saw me like run, cover, do all these things, them dudes would be like, bro, you're gonna do raw. Yeah. You're gonna be good. Yeah. So I remember Leroy Smith, Brian McFadden, Cromarty, you know, uh, Jerome Carter, Pat Watkins, all these dudes telling me, like, man, you're gonna, you gonna be good, bro. Yeah. Like, you got it. You got the feet, you got the skills, like, mm-hmm. you're you, you gonna be good. But it's just like, they see it, 
But you but don't. I'm not getting it. Nah, I kind of know it because, you know, and I always had this comment. Somebody told me this. I think I went to, this is a crazy story. So Kirby Smart, mm-hmm. head coach at Georgia, mm-hmm. he taught me how to play corner. What? So when I was in high school, Kirby was a GA, a graduate assistant at Florida State. Wow. So when they recruited me, they used to send Kirby to Your come school. to camps with me. Mm. Right? So we went to this camp called Down and Dirty. It probably was illegal recruiting. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. he went. He came to this camp with me, and my high school went there, but Kirby worked with me the whole time I was there. Wow. Press coverage. He wanted to see me do this, see me do that. So he was teaching me, like, how to play DB, how to yeah. play corner. Yeah. Like I was just playing, I was just playing off of just, I didn't have no technique, mm-hmm. just playing off of athleticism, play offense my whole life. So once I got, but he never coached me. So when he, when I got to Florida State, he left and took the job at, uh, at uh, LSU with Nick Saban. That's what I was gonna ask you. So I never got to play for him, but he actually taught me over, you know, some camps and just being around like how to like play corner. Mm-hmm. And so I always knew, you know, once I got to college, you know, I kind of like learned from Coach Andrews. Everything was about just technique and I never relied on what I did before. So I kind of erased everything I had learned before when I was younger Mm -hmm. and like basically conformed. If you conform to what they're telling you, you got a better chance of like being successful when you first get to school. Don't listen to your trainer back at home. Because your trainer ain't going to put you in the game. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't had no trainer, but. But it's just in today's world. In today's, in today's world, world yeah. like people are like, oh, my trainer do this versus your coach is the one that's going to play you. You got to buy into the you, system. You got to fully submit to it. Yeah. And if you do that, like, like I only knew how to play press in high school. Mm-hmm. Didn't know how to play off coverage. And I was pressing wrong, but it's just like, you got your man, I got my man. Mm-hmm. But then I learned how to play off coverage. Best thing that could have happened to me, cause that's that was probably my best quality. Three step, I can get my three step read. I got good ball skills. I can mentally process things a lot faster than most of my peers. Yeah, and it's because I've always been a student of the game, and that's coming from when I was younger, reading the newspaper, being a student of what how how guys made these plays. When I watched the games. Like, I listen to the commentators say what they're saying. I don't just look at the result of the play. Mm -hmm. So I was always a student of the game. So when I got to college, the first thing I learned was know what you got to do. And then probably by my sophomore year, I was like, okay, now I can learn what the linebackers are doing. Mm -hmm. Then my junior year, I'm going to learn the linebackers and the D-line. Yeah. And then I always studied the offensive side because – I was intrigued with offense, so I already knew concepts and all that stuff from just studying and just being around. So uh, call it a hallway guy. So we, we got Terrell Buckley. Terrell Buckley came like my junior or senior year. Okay. That's when he started volunteer coaching. He's a legendary college and pro player. Mm-hmm. And Terrell Buckley taught me everything. Wow. So he used to say, what, t- what time you got class? I'm like, eight. All right. I see at seven fifteen. Mm. So I used to go in the office, bro. He he there seven fifteen. He going there seven fifteen. Me and him watching film, wow. and we watching NFL tape, all type of stuff. He teaching me like this, 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 that. Yeah, this what the D line doing. And I'm like, okay, what time you got at class? Twelve. I see at twelve thirty. Mm-hmm. So that's when I learned. I'm like, oh, this is how you really become a student of the, of the game. game. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, but I had injuries all through college, and you know, yeah, you know, let go, yeah. But okay, so you say you had injuries all throughout college. You had to get um, surgery. Did you have to get surgery or soldier again after your freshman year? Yeah, so my so I had surgery two years in a row. Mm-hmm. So I had surgery my red shirt year, and I had surgery after my red shirt freshman year. So two years in a row, right then left. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even play. Um, so I was supposed to run track when I got to college, but I had to have surgery both times. So they wouldn't let me run track because I had to do rehab. Mm. So I couldn't run track, but I, my, my deal was I was supposed to come in and run track and play football, mm. but I kept having surgery. So they're like, nah, you got to be over here rehabbing, and getting yourself back. Right. So I couldn't yeah. run track. Yeah. So I had surgery two years in a row. Then after that, uh, 
I had a good sophomore year, uh, good junior year, and I thought about leaving early, mm -hmm. which I probably, sh and looking back on it, I probably should have. You thought about leaving early? Yeah, because I had started, I was starting three years. I probably had like uh, five or six picks my junior year, mm -hmm. two to the house. Sophomore year, I got bowl game MVP. Got it. Like, I was playing good. Yeah. Like, but I was still, I wasn't going to get no bigger. Yeah. I was already 4'3". I wasn't going to get no faster. Right. So I'm like, I graduated. I graduated in three years. I'm like, I might as well leave. So what made you stay? Because I talked to Coach Andrews, and he like, what's the point of you leaving? you you probably not going to be a high pick. Uh, but I'm like, yeah. hell. If I'd have known why I wasn't going to get drafted, I probably would just probably left. Just but I probably would have got drafted because... Leaving <laughs> early, I probably would have got a chance to go to the combine. Yeah. I would have got a chance to, if I would have got a chance to go to the combine and run a 40, I would have ran probably top five fastest times. Yeah. Because at the pro day, I ran a 4 2 center. So I'm like, hell, at the combine, at least I would have ran a, a 4 2 4-3-0. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So I'm like, I should have just left. But my senior year, I was up and down, hurt, had a knee, and my shoulders was acting up. So it was like I was always hurt throughout college, but played, only missed one game. So mm. through my whole career, so I probably got the most. I think I had the most starts, and and somebody else broke it. An offensive lineman broke it, but I had the most starts in Florida State history for a long time. Dang, yeah, oh, that's what's up, man. Especially the way you got there and facing the adversity you had to face. So uh, before we transition to like you going into the NFL, what was it like playing for Coach Bowden? Like how was like, how was he and how was that time? He was, he, he was, I think he was, <clears throat> Coach Bowden helped me out more as an adult than he did back when I was uh, like a young, young adult, should I say. Mm -hmm. Because all of those things that he taught us, like his whole goal was for his, for to tell all his players about Christ. Nice. People don't, people know it, but they don't know it. Yeah. Like he was like that grandfather figure to where they say little but they saying a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he led by example. Mm. I had never heard him curse. Never seen him like, you know, get angry at, at dogging nobody. You know, dogging anybody. Competitive. Yes. yes. You know, aggressive about like how we should go about things. But he did a good job of managing the coaches. You know what I mean? Coach Andrews was the enforcer of everything. Mm -hmm. Jimbo came along my last two years as an offensive coordinator. Um, so just being around, you saw how much they respected him. Mm. So you you, you basically, right. yeah, you fell in line. It was always yes, sir, no, sir. Everything was about manners. Even though we had different guys from different walks of life, mm -hmm. we may not have gotten it when we were in school, but when we left and became adults, it's like, oh, I'm glad I was... I had an example like Coach Mountain. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. glad. Like, even to this day, it doesn't matter. Like, people say, if I say, hey, I went to Florida State, you play for Coach Bowden? Yeah. They're like, oh, what was he yeah, like? It's the same yeah. thing every single yeah, time. Yeah. Like, everybody wants to know. Um, and I always say this, and Coach Bowden is, obviously, everybody knows about Coach Bowden, but Coach Andrews, mm -hmm. heart and soul of it. Wow. Best coach I ever had best one of the best men i know by far not even close what made him what made him like the best coach bro he was the hardest coach i've ever had he demanded excellence mm -hmm. every single day from the time you walked into the meeting room from the time you stepped on the grass but then he loves you he will curse you out like a dog uh. but he'll sit with you in the cafeteria and say you know i love you i'm doing this because of I promised your mama I was going to take care of you. Wow. And you don't get that. That's yeah. when, you know, the genuineness of coaching is like a lot of people do it for money. Some people do it for notoriety. Some people do it for wins and losses. Yes, all of those things that he, I believe he did it for. Yeah. But his most important thing was I'm going to make better men out of you. Yeah. And I'm going to do it through the game by being, he only knew one way to do it, and that's mm -hmm. direct. Wow. So you always knew where you stood. Yeah. If he coming there looking at you sideways, you probably didn't, didn't look good on tape mm. or you wasn't hustling. Wow. So everything was about effort, attitude, discipline, and it com competing. Yeah. Like, 
at the practice, we ran every day. And it was a competition you know, yeah. who can win, who gonna come in first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tackling drills, old school way. Mm -hmm. And he taught Deion Sanders, you know, um, Leroy Butler, okay. these Hall of Fame guys, Derek right. Brooks. He taught all these dudes. So we coming in and we seeing these guys and how they love them so much. What are we missing? Yeah. Why wow, when we just fall in line? Yeah. So I think by far he's had the most impact on on my life um, as a coach. I'm going. Nah, no, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So <clears throat> you leave. We we leave Florida State. Um, you didn't get an invite to the combine, mm -hmm. but you ran a four two seven at your pro day. Mm -hmm. um, when you 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 go undrafted. You end up going to Denver. Mm -hmm. So were you surprised that you went undrafted? Hell yeah. I ain't going to lie to you. I was. Now, looking back on it, I shouldn't have been surprised. Mm. But the reason why is because, hell, the dudes that was getting drafted, hell, I was my, I was way better than them yeah. in college. Yeah. You know, if you're looking at body of work. Right. You know what I mean? I probably had three or four, two or three punt returns to the crib. Mm -hmm. Probably had six touchdowns in college. Yeah. 11, 12, 13 interceptions. Bowl game MVP twice. Wow. Started four years. I'm like, and I played at a good school against some good competition. So I thought that was the pedigree to go. Yeah. But I didn't understand was, was your potential for the next level. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that. Five nine, a hundred and seventy five pounds is not potential for the next level. I didn't understand that. I just thought it was what you did and how you produce. That's how it should be. That's how it should. But I didn't know that they'll take a dude from New Mexico State. Got the tangible. Because he's six one and he a hundred and ninety five pounds mm -hmm. over somebody. I didn't know that. I had no idea. So. I, I was kind of blind to it. I was just always taught the best man is whatever. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I remember during the draft, that's probably the saddest day of my life. During the draft, I got a call in the third round from Atlanta. They, like, called me. Hey, we think about taking you with our next pick if we take a defensive guy. Mm. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. No, no Cleveland call in the fourth round. I'm like. So I'm getting calls. I'm at yeah. my mama's house. I'm getting calls. So I'm like, I'm thinking I'm going to get drafted. I ain't yeah. had no draft party or nothing like that because I didn't go to the combine or nothing like that. But I kind of figured I went to an all-star game. They had the Texas versus Nation game in, um, one of them, in El Paso, Texas, something like that. I, I did really well there. Okay. You know, did good in practice. I was like, okay, I should. Some of these dudes, I saw some of the dudes that I was in the, in the all-star game with, they were getting picked. I'm like, I was killing him in practice. Right, right, right. You know, so I'm like, I, yeah. I should get picked. Man, then the, the seventh round come out, like, I don't even want to get picked. No get picked yeah. I was like, this is embarrassing. Yeah. But it was good. I thought that's the that's when I cried. That's the first time I really cried around my mother. I was like, sad, went in the room. I'm like, what am I going to do? Mm. And I'm thinking, like, it's kind of over, but it's not over. Yeah. And, of course, my agent's like, oh, well, you got plenty of teams that want you, blah, blah, blah. So my high school teammate, Marcus Thomas, he had got drafted by the Broncos a year or so before. Okay. And so we were we were high school teammates and friends. He went to the University of Florida. He was a D-lineman. So he was already playing with the Broncos. So he like, bro, come out here. Like, come here. You can stay with me. Mm -hmm. Like, he like, trust me. He like, you're going to like it. You're going to do good. So I was like, all right, cool. So I went to Denver, Dang. and we had a new coach. Josh McDaniels had just got a coaching job. I was his first coaching job. Okay. And he came uh, from New England. Yeah. And so they were going through, you know, new coaches, and I was like, all right, cool, I go. Okay, so you end up, you end up going to um, Denver. What was what was your first year like? What was your first year in the NFL like? Uh, it was actually. I was depressed, bro. You was depressed? I was just depressed. depressed of, like, I was depressed happened? because life was different. You were the school in Tallahassee, right? Uh -huh. You leave Tallahassee where you like the man, 
you got everything at your fingertips. Then I go to Colorado where I'm an undrafted free agent. I mean, I got a little bit of money, but not like that. Mm -hmm. I'm scratching and clawing. I got no friends out there, not my real. I got one friend who my, my buddy, yeah. but he playing. He, he like a starter. Yeah. So he can't really relate to me. So I was like, man, I don't like this. This is not what I thought about. This is not the dream that I was dreaming about. Dang. So I was like, man, this is terrible. So I'm not, I'm on the practice squad. Well, first of all, when we first get there, I'm fighting, you know, through camp, mm -hmm. not getting no reps. You know, it, you know how it is. I know, yeah. So I'm like, dang. But I'm, I go back, I'm like, well, one on one, I'm finna shine. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go guard. Brandon Marshall, who was the number one receiver at the time. They like, nah, get him out of there. They trying to get me up out of there. Yeah. I'm like, no, let me yeah. go get some. Yeah. Let me go get some. But yeah. I already knew Brandon. Uh, my high school teammate um, went to UCF, okay. and they were roommates in college. So I used to work out with them in the summertime. Okay. He a little bit older than me, but I already knew him. Eddie Royal was a rookie. Uh, he made first team all whatever his rookie year. Mm -hmm. He went to Virginia Tech. I went going against him. All oh, years yeah. in college. That's yeah. like, yeah. I've been playing against him for four years already. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, these are the stars on the on the team. So I'm like, I know I can guard these two. Let me go out here and see. Now, of course, my rookie year, what I will tell you is it that mentorship of older guys really like instill confidence in you. And this is my these are the I have four Hall of No, three Hall of Famers my rookie year in the secondary. Cham Bailey. Mm. Brian Dawkins and Ty Law. I ain't know that. I ain't that. I suppose three, three Hall of Fame, bro. Three Hall of Fame in the secondary. You came up, and they me. all older. They all older, and Champ and I, we still friends to this day. And Dawkins is from Jacksonville, so I know him. Um, I didn't know Ty Law at all. Um, so Ty Law had been in New England for a while. McDaniel's brought him over because I'm you know Patriots. they had the New England deal, so he came over. Dawkins was coming over from Philly. Champ was already there. He was the man. Mm. Of course, I was idolizing all of them. Right. And so, man, when I got there, like, my locker was next to Champ's. Like, they, cause they didn't think I was going to be there. That's what you're right. Undrafted. They're like, oh, he, he ain't going to be here. We just put his locker here, and so he'd be out of here. And then Champ would have a 